Hello everybody, and welcome back to the extras of the wonderful 101. Um, this time we are heading into our final stretch of gameplay by covering the wonderful missions. Now, the wonderful missions are basically um, a string of missions that are meant to be challenging. Um, you are basically... Uh, just got to kill enemies, and the better you do, the more bonus time you get, so you can kind of get a higher score. Um, it's basically just a very condensed score attack mode. Now you can play it in multiplayer, um, although I believe that playing it in multiplayer does make it a little bit weird, um, because whenever you add a person the number of wonderful ones that you personally can recruit goes down. So, when there are two people playing, you can only have 50 wonderful ones each. Um, when you have three people, it goes down further. And then when you get to five, I think you can only have uh, about 20, which is obviously not enough for an excellent Unite Morph. However, the fact that you can play this multiplayer is pretty awesome. I'm not quite sure what happens to the frame rate when you have five people playing, but um, I suspect it's at least reasonably smooth, if a bit of a mess to try and play, because five batches of wonderful ones running around at once on the screen could probably get a little bit confusing. Now, you can play these at any point during the game, um, and I believe, he would being believe, I'm not 100% certain, um, that you will always have the core wonderful ones to utilise whilst you're playing. Also, hidden throughout kind of each kind of difficulty level, Chugi is there. Um, I don't know whether any of the other wonderful ones are hidden about, like a mortar or a Vulcan or whatever. Because um, I've literally only ever found Chugi. But it's an extra Unite Morph to make use of, so uh, it's always helpful. Now, in total, there are six different wonderful missions to take on. We have Easy A, and then upon completing Easy A, you get Easy B, and then that repeats up until Hard. Also, after defeating all of the enemies in a mission, you are given bonus time in which you need to collect kind of citizens so that you, uh, you know, have a much stronger team because you have more people in it, but also kind of pick up O parts because they count towards your score at the end. Well, kind of partially, but it's always just quite fun to collect them. <laughs> Now the other thing that's quite cool about the wonderful missions is that um, you basically get to kind of go through all the different locations of the game um, again, which is, is quite fun, it's p particularly when you are kind of playing through locations that you didn't get to play through with the normal wo wonderful ones normally. Um, you'll see what I mean by that a little bit later on, um, but... It makes sense when you see what I mean. Now I'll point out that in total, um, all of these wonderful missions is going to take about an hour to uh, complete if you get through these things successfully. Um, although it, it is rather sad that there are only six variants, well, six wonderful missions that you can play through, but then considering the size of the game, I'm really not that bothered, because you don't 
get anything for completing the wonderful missions other than uh, bragging rights, really. And even then, you don't really get that many bragging rights because even the hard mode isn't that hard. I mean, it's basically just because you have kind of a ridiculous amount of uh, space in most places to kind of fight. And if you are competent with the game, then you should be able to get through it perfectly fine. Now we enter the final mission of Easy A. Um, every single wonderful mission has three kind of parts to it. Um, this one's rather mean, but if you were uh, were paying attention to the kind of opening cutscene thing, um, you will have seen this particular mission within the wonderful missions shown um, because it's the one that had all of the multiple wonderful ones fighting. It was quite cool. Also, you may have also noticed that kind of a variety of different kind of music tracks are used in these missions that don't normally appear in the uh, areas where we are. So, most notably, when we're getting to the end of hard mode, we're going to hear that absolutely beautiful final boss theme again. Which is going to make me a very, very, very happy bunny. Thankfully, I. Well, th th there are no punch out sections. Because as, as, as much as I do think they're awesome, I, I, I would not have been too happy if they were here. Because that would just be evil. I mean, I have to face that blooming vulgar Gujin all over again. I've developed a searing hatred for that robot. Preventing me from getting my bottle clap. Damn him. Well done, team. Now I will say please do not expect anything higher than a gold from me during these wonderful missions. It's like I I, I can do well enough in the normal game and get platinums, but here I think I, I just reached a point where I was just like, I just want to get through. Not particularly fussed about overall success other than getting through. However, I will point out that um, in the demo of the game you were able to play wonderful missions there, and you didn't have all your wonderful ones available to you at the start, um, but if you kind of ran to the right and to the left, I believe it was, and kind of moved your wonderliner in a circle, you could pick up pink and yellow, and that was how you um, were able to try them out in the demo. It was quite cool, um, and I guess it kind of foreshadowed the amount of. Uh, how shall I put it? The amount of secrets that this game holds. Also, it's really, really, really odd to see the uh, Unite Morphs all in red. Although I guess kind of... Part of that makes the multiplayer easier because each Unite Morph is different colour for each kind of player. So it's helpful that way. 
I mean, part of it is also because they're going for the um, Incredibles look with the uh, red suits. And also, why none of them have capes? Because, uh, as we all know, capes are bad. It's especially if you are trying to uh, be a superhero. N never wear a cape. Never, ever, ever, ever wear a cape when you're a superhero. Unless you're some sort of fantastical being. In which case, I'm sure you can perfectly well save yourself. Now, I have to say, these weapons are not particularly helpful. I mean, maybe it's ever so slightly useful in kind of once you've kind of locked on to one of the UFO guys, you can kind of wreak mass havoc. Also do that, um, but I think that's more because uh, the Tudor Goo was stuck in the wall, so he, he couldn't really do a whole lot. One thing that I, I've kind of noticed that happens that rather annoyed me when I realised what was happening was that in this mode, if you lose your primary wonderful one who can, you know, use the Unite Morph you want to use, um, you can't use it. Which makes sense, um, but then it's just like, what the heck are all the other wonderful ones doing, apart from, you know, just being Unite more fodder. I mean, I suppose I guess that's the point, but um, it's not re very fun either way. Now, the thing that I I'm um, not too impressed with, with the wonderful missions is that sometimes you'll get a situation like this where there isn't a kind of extra location that you don't realise exists um, and then like a single enemy will be hiding there and it's just like what, why did you have to decide to hide there? But then what can you do? It's a challenge and that's kind of the entire point of it. Now, th there is another thing that I haven't mentioned, um, which I really should have mentioned kind of in the last part where I was showing off um, the Unite launcher um, with Unite Gun. And that's that I think, or at least I'm pretty sure, that there is a level above Unite Launcher that you can get if you fully level up all of your Unite Guns. Um, and basically that turns your Unite Launcher into what is essentially a Unite Cannon. Um, it's like a tank. And it's very, very, very powerful. I mean, obviously it, it's slower to load than uh, your standard Unite Gun and even Unite Launcher, but it is very powerful. So if you want that, it's there, you've just got to do a lot to uh, get close to achieving it. Because, I mean, levelling up every single wonderful one is quite the task. I mean, if you get them all in your first run through, or even your second, then by the time you have played through the game on every single difficulty, you will have easily got it. But obviously you've got to, you know, get to that point. 
where you have uh, played through the game that many times. Because, I mean, five times is, is, is no mean feat. Especially when, you know, a single run-through is going to take you about 15 hours of gameplay time-ish. Um, longer if you are kind of taking your time, which is a lot. So I mean, I'm, I, I still find it funny that people were kind of getting all concerned about the length of the game when Hideki Kamiya said that you could beat it in a day. Because, I mean, it's true, you, you can beat it in a day. It's just a day of, kind of... a day of the wonderful 101 and nothing else. But then, you know, if you want to, like, sleep or eat, you, you, you kind of can't. Which is not the best thing in the world. Um, but then, if I mean, if you want to complete the wonderful 101, which is a vastly different ch kind of challenge, um, it's going to take you a long, long time. I think most people who I've seen who have done it have put a hundred hours into this game, which is a pretty hefty investment. Um, And I would say that that's, that's great. Um, I mean, I do have a problem with games that are very, very long. Um, but it's the games in which it takes a very long time to complete the main story. Because we're kind of in a time where we don't really have time anymore. At least I don't. Um, it's the curse of getting older. You start running out of time in which to enjoy yourself. So whenever there's a game that kind of takes longer than, say, 30 hours for me to complete, I am turned off by it. Well, not complete, beat. Because I, I want to be able to enjoy a variety of games and kind of... Whenever anything's really long, that... that more investment than I am generally willing to commit to. It's basically the reason why I have um, never kind of played Xenoblade Chronicles, because that game requires a ridiculously long time investment to even beat. And I don't agree with that. Also, I have no idea what the heck we just went on with all of the... Uh, moving about there, we just kind of zipped and zapped everywhere. Just crazy, but oh well, these things happen. But yeah, so... I think that having a game that you can kind of beat in a reasonable time, and I'd say anywhere between kind of five to 35 hours is reasonable. Um, if it takes longer than that to complete it, then that's awesome. Because, kind of, the investment then b doesn't become a, a kind of choice between what you have to do. Um, it it, well, it becomes beating it is what you have to do, completing it is optional. And spending a ridiculous amount of time on a game is kind of better when you do it optionally. Um, which sounds really bizarre, but I, I would like to think that you get where I'm coming from. It, it's basically that after I've beaten a game, if I want to spend more time with it, that's up to me. And if I don't want to spend a long time with it, then I, I don't really appreciate having the experience drawn out up to a ridiculous length. It's basically the reason why I got so annoyed at Final Fantasy XIII, 
because it just kept going and going and going and I felt obliged to finish the story at least and then afterwards I was just like I, I, I don't want to spend any more time with you. you you've already taken like 50 hours of my life I'm not going to spend another 30 trying to complete everything in this game. Thankfully, um, its sequels did fix that issue, in that um, you could complete those games in about 30 hours. Um, at least I think it was about 30 hours, I may have ended up spending a little bit longer, um, but kind of the general investments of those didn't kind of last as long. But in short, I would say that Wonderful 101 gets the balance right. I mean, I, may, the main story may be a smidge too long, at least for some people, um, but in the grand scheme of things, it, it hits the balance quite nicely. Well, there's something that I find quite frankly bizarre is that I'm gonna get through normal. Well, actually, yeah, am I going to get through? Eh. I was gonna say I get through normal A quicker than I got through some of the easy modes, but eh, it's, it's about the same. They only start to get longer when you get to uh, hard mode, and that's literally only because more enemies are thrown at you and bigger enemies are thrown at you. So, kind of, you automatically have to spend longer fighting them. Now, that has to be Professor Shirogane, because um, I can't think of anybody else who speaks with that, act that voice in this game. That doesn't sound like Professor Shiragane. Which is the most bizarre thing. And we are back to you, you cheeky devil. I wasn't a, fine, a fan of you in the main story, don't think I'm going to be a fan of you here. Either, because... You're not, you're not nice. Or funny. And how to? I, th I think that technically, you are meant to, uh, you know, beat these guys up as you go along rather than killing the thing straight off. But uh, certainly, it leads to an interesting fight. Also, I love how they are basically using, I think it's the song from the credits, during this fight. Just makes it quite epic, all things considered. Also, Hammer Cyclone on these guys is great fun, and really actually quite useful. Thankfully, only one more kind of mission of normal A, and then we can get on to the slightly more difficult missions, which have got some awesome things in it. And also, um, I have something to talk about. Yay! I could have talked about it here, but didn't quite think about it in time. Silly me. Oh well, these things happen. There's not a whole lot you can do about it when kind of your brain just doesn't uh, function properly. It's all these exams that are happening at the time of recording the commentary. Just fr frazzle the brain. The wonderful 101. But here we go, it's time for the final mission of Normal A. 
and we get a warning that something big is coming, or at least kind of a, a, a kind of bombardment of attacks. It's it's not really gonna touch you. The, the arena's too large for it to cause any lasting damage. But this is kind of what you're gonna begin to have to face off. Kind of ankos, a ridiculous amount of dogus and chudogus, and it kind of can get quite hectic. Now, if you're wondering why I was using, uh, well, why I am using sword and not claw as I would normally against ankos, and it's because I was kind of trying to catch. The wonderful Dogus in the crossfire. Oh, uh, I didn't spot you there, mate. Lumenek. Yeah, th th this is the kind of stuff that you're going to be facing off against from this point onwards. Um, which is quite cool, I have to say. Because even though it's not necessarily the most challenging thing in the world, um, at least it did seem like that to me, I'm sure it's probably a lot harder for people who aren't used to the wonderful 101 and or acting games in general. Um, but kind of, it's very exhilarating. Because you are given a variety of kind of enemy combinations that you don't get in the main game. And it, it's just kind of quite fun. It's kind of moments like this where you kind of see the game as it's kind of meant to be a complete, kind of completely chaotic fight that kind of, when it's successful, just looks like an absolute kind of ballet of insane majesty. But that's normal A complete, it's time to move on to normal B which is just going to unlock now and then it's onward to the hard missions, let's do this. <laughs>